Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather, and it's all about this next storm cycle for the West. There are three different storm systems that are riding the jet stream with this thing through the 10th, maybe into the uh, early of the 11th, but through the 10th. First storm is the warmest, and they gradually get colder from there. So the third storm is going to be, in my opinion, the coldest and most potent of this three storm systems in this cycle for the West. Um, let me just show you what the setup is here on infrared satellite. So here's your jet stream running up into uh, you, Alaska and into Canada, dipping down, cradling these other storms. So you've got one low here, you've got a low here, another one here, and then one way out. And you might as well mark that one with the southern branch. It's kind of active as well, running into the southern U.S. So essentially, this is storm one. There is storm two, and then storm number three is right here. It will come up over the top, grab colder air, and race in on the 9th and 10th. So three different storm systems that will run us through about the 10th of March. What happens after the 10th? High pressure probably rebuilds across the West after that point. Let me show you what the opinion is of the GFS model right here. Its interpretation on Saturday morning right here this is the this is Saturday morning this is the 5th of March so you've got one low cross in Colorado dropping snow into Wyoming southwest Montana um, Utah Colorado northern New Mexico and another low hitting California Shasta Tahoe and Mammoth all right so the first storm will then move out fast here Sunday morning and it's already moving up towards the northeast with mainly rain second storm slides out of California and again, this is Sunday morning into Utah, Wyoming, southern Idaho, Colorado, northern New Mexico. This one's a little bit colder, so you're going to have more snow at lower elevations with this one. Uh, moving into Monday morning right here, um, a little bit of leftover snow through Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. Um, then that's, that storm is already making its way into the northeast. Now, this one will be colder for the northeast. Monday night, Tuesday, you've got snow, and there it is, in the northeast. So that's a better accumulating snow for the northeast. Let's look at the 9th and 10th because here comes the third storm of the group, the final one. This is Wednesday morning, the 9th. You can see it dropping in from the Pacific Northwest, pulling a cold front down through Montana, Wyoming. Here it comes, diving further south, Thursday morning, the 10th. It's all snow at most elevations, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, northern New Mexico. By Thursday night, it's beginning to slide out. And by Friday morning, the 11th, it should be gone, moving out into the heartland, high pressure rebuilds across the west. Let me show you my totals. We'll do them in two phases. So basically all of today through the 7th. The biggest numbers, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. Um, so this basically takes into account the first and the second storm system. Um, again, first storm ha may have high snow levels, uh, but the second one will have colder air, and that's probably where most of this accumulation is going to come from. But the numbers in Colorado have gone up a little bit in the I-70 corridor in north, which is what I expected to happen, uh, what I had mentioned yesterday. And southwest Colorado, that's probably where they're going to be the biggest. Probably a one to two footer down there from Telluride, Purgatory, Silverton over Wolf Creek. That's where they're going to be the biggest. And I'm still liking 12, 13, 14, 15 inches out to Snowbird, Park City, Snow Basin, Brighton, Solitude, all those places. And probably 8 to 12 over the top of the Tetons. All right, so let's look at phase two. Now this one, excuse me, this one takes into account the third storm, which will be the coldest. And notice we basically do the same numbers as the first two or even more snow because I think the colder air will produce a more widespread snow with better ratios. You're looking at 15, 16 over the uh, Wasatch and potentially 20 inches over the Tetons and maybe a foot in big sky. And in Colorado, um, it does. it's potential that the I-70 corridor north gets more snow out of the third storm because it's kind of coming in from the northwest. So interesting to look at those trends. Um, but overall, when you combine all three storms, we could be looking at a sort of a one to two, maybe a three foot scenario um, over Colorado and certainly two, maybe three feet over the uh, Wasatch and the Tetons. Now let's look at that. Look at the third storm's impact on the Pacific Northwest. Colder air, better snow, one to three feet 
from Whistler over Baker to Stevens, Timberline, and Bachelor. Simply because it's colder, the numbers will be better. Let's look at the Northeast. All right, so first storm uh, coming in on Sundays. Too warm is mainly rain, so that's not where these numbers come from. But this runs all the way through the 13th. So it's the second and the third storm that will produce these numbers next week when the colder air comes in with better snow um, production at a lot of the resorts. Again, that happens mainly next week. All right, guys, well, there you go. That's the way it looks. I'll take you back. We'll end it on this one, which runs through the 7th for the West. Again, three different storms. Uh, plan it out accordingly. The third storm will probably be the most potent next week. Take care. Always appreciate you tuning in here.